Hello and welcome back to another video. Now, if you want complete IGCSE physics tips video, make sure that you watch this video because I have covered in detail uh, everything you need to know about planning and a lot of tips that's going to help you really understand paper six in detail. For example, limits of experimental accuracy, common errors, and much, much more. So do uh, watch that video and if you're done with that video and you need practice on the planning question for 2025, let's begin. Okay, so let's start with the planning questions from 2025. Okay, so the first question says that a student investigates the relationship between diameter and resistance of wires. Okay, so this is an important point. The student is comparing the diameter of the wire and the resistance of the wire. The following apparatus is available. You have wires with different diameters and you have an instrument that's going to measure the diameter of the wire. You have meter rule, ammeter, voltmeter, and the power supply. And the other apparatus that is normally found in the school laboratory is also available. Plan an investigation to determine how the diameter of the wire affects its resistance. So what, is, so what are you changing? What is the independent variable? That is going to be the diameter of wire. You're going to have different wires in the, in, the, in the circuit and then you're going to compare how is the resistance uh, different resistance is given by this equation r equals v by i where v is the potential difference across the wire and i is the current in the wire you do not you do not need to write about the safety precautions okay so in your plan first draw a circuit diagram to show the circuit that you're using okay so in you so you can see that you have a wire right you have a piece of wire let's uh, mention it like this this is your wire that and you know the diameter of the wire because you're comparing the diameter right you will measure the diameter of the wire and then place it inside this circuit let's put a circuit like this and then you you have to measure compare the resistance to measure resistance you need to know the voltage as well as the current current is measured by the ammeter and it's always in series right it's in series and then since there's a circuit we need to have our power supply here this is your power supply that's um let's go ahead. Uh, this is ammeter this is power supply and then you also need to measure the voltage so voltage is going to be you need to have a voltmeter across your wire that's your voltmeter. Here we can even add a switch so that we can control. Now explain briefly how do you do the experiment investigation. So you just have to first measure the uh, diameter of the wire. And then with the known diameter, you're going to start the power supply, turn on the power supply, the current will flow through it, and you will measure the current and the voltmeter. You're going to record this in a table. And then using the uh, I values and the V values, you can easily calculate the resistance. Then you're going to compare it with different diameters of wire. You can make sure that you have at least uh, five wires, okay? And then you will compare how the resistance of wire changes as the diameter is being changed. You can either compare the results in the table if you want to um, reach your conclusion, or you can plot a graph where you have the diameter of wire on the y on the x-axis, and on the y-axis you have the resistance. And then you can see if the graph is going up or going down to, uh, to see what's happening. Okay, so first of all, take five wires and measure their diameter. Record it in the table below. So I will go, in ta go to the table in a while. But you will have different wires with different, and you'll uh, record their or measure their diameter. Then you're going to set up the apparatus as shown in the figure with the first wire. So this is your figure, right? With the first wire, you'll set it up and turn on the power supply. I'll write that as well. Turn on the power and close the switch. Then measure the current using ammeter and the voltage using the voltmeter. Record these values in your table and calculate resistance, which is voltage over current. Then you're going to repeat uh, steps two to four for all the other wires and record the values in your table. And uh, for the, you, they're also asking you to mention one key variable that needs to be kept constant. Remember, resistance depends on the resistance is directly proportional to the 
uh, length of the wire and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So since we are changing the area, the other key variable is going to be the length. So make sure that the length of all the wires is same. So the table will be something like this. You have different wires and then you will measure their diameter. Make sure it's very important that you're, measure, you're writing the units in which you're measuring. And then current in, amp, uh, in amps, voltage in volts, and then resistance is going to be V over I in ohms. To come on a conclusion, you will, you will compare how resistance changes as the diameter increases or the, how the if the diameter increases, what is happening to the resistance. Okay, here I have also uh, added this information that you can measure your diameter using a micrometer screw gauge. And to measure the length of the uh, wires, you can use a meter rule. You can look at the answer and compare your, your answer in this uh, marking scheme as well. Now let's move on to the second question. Okay, so hot water is poured into a glass beaker and allowed to cool for five minutes. We have a number here, let's uh, point it out. Okay, so in a you have a glass beaker and you're uh, you're pouring hot water in it, right? And you're and you're then allowing it to cool for five minutes. You're supposed to plan an uh, an experiment, to investigate whether the rate of cooling of hot water, the rate of cooling is given here. The rate of cooling of hot water depends upon the initial temperature of the hot water. Okay, the rate of cooling of water can be calculated using this equation. The rate of cooling equals the decrease in temperature divided by time taken. So remember, what are, what are the things that you're measuring? You're measuring the rate of cooling, which is decrease in temperature. To remember, remember decrease in temperature is going to be um, final temperature minus initial temperature. So you need to have these two readings while you're uh, planning out your experiment. And then your time taken. Okay. And then you're provided with these um, apparatus. You have a supply of cold water and an electric kettle to um, heat your water. You have two 50 centimeter cube of glass beaker and you have a measuring cylinder. You may use any other common laboratory apparatus. In your plan, include any other apparatus needed. So if you look at your experiment, you're measuring the change in temperature. So of course, you will need a thermometer. And then you are measuring the time taken. So you will, you're going to need a clock or a stop clock or a timer. A brief description of the method, including what you will measure and how you'll make sure your measurements are accurate. The variables you will control, we'll go through them one by one, okay? The, the a results table, you're not required to enter or fill the table, and how you will process your results to reach a conclusion. Okay, so you basically have a beaker that has hot water, known volume of hot water. And then you have the thermometer submer submerged inside it. This is not a very good diagram of a thermometer, but it might do. You have a kettle to warm the water. And this is being poured here. This diagram is not necessary, but you may include it, okay, if you want. So this just helps you understand what's going on. Now let's move on to the experiment. So Okay, I'm starting with the additional apparatus since they specifically asked you to mention the apparatus needed, okay? So the extra apparatus is going to be a clock, a stop clock or a timer, and a thermometer. You can also say a temperature probe because it's going to be dipped inside water. Okay, so you're going to measure a known volume of water in, in the kettle, and then you're going to heat the water to 30 degrees Celsius temperature. You can even say that you're uh, heating it to a known temperature. And then you're going to pour it inside the beaker, right? right? Then note the initial temperature as T1 and record it in your table. Then you have to let it cool for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, measure the final temperature using a thermometer T2. Record this in the table. Calculate and record the decrease in temperature, which is the initial temperature T1 minus the final temperature T2. Then you're going to calculate and record the rate of cooling. Rate of cooling is decrease in temperature, which was T1 minus T2, divided by time taken. Remember, time taken is 5 minutes. Then you're going to repeat the above steps, step 1 to step 5, but now you're going to, to have different initial temperatures. With, I will say, T1 as 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, you need to have at least 5, all right? And then uh, make sure you need to have your control variables. So I will uh, move this here. These are your control variables. 
make sure that the volume of water is same and the time of cooling which is five minutes is also same you will get two marks if you are mentioning two control variables and then to increase your accuracy repeat the experiment at least three times and then take the average okay this is your table you can um have something like this initial temperature which is t1 t2 is the final temperature make sure that you're also adding the units decrease in temperature is t1 minus t2 as degree celsius and rate of cooling is going to be degree celsius per minute because it's temperature decrease in temperature over time taken you will fill in the table when you're with your values and then to compare compare how the rate of cooling changes as the initial temperature changes because there this is what they're asking for right they're saying how the rate of cooling of water depends upon the initial temperature of the hot water you can also mention plot a graph of initial temperature on the x-axis and the rate of cooling on the y-axis plot a graph to uh, see the trend you can uh, look at this you can look at this marking scheme to compare your own answers and that's all for may june uh, planning questions